We as humans are creatures of habit and pattern, and so looking to the world we can note several trends. We see on average countries in Africa and the Middle East are non-democratic, and we must ask ourselves, why? Well, comparing the different states in both regions, we can see they all possess some combination of natural resources, colonial history, religion, etc. And we leave with the first option, the Middle East colonial history. The modern Middle East emerged out of tremendous turmoil in the aftermath of World War I, and the creation under the auspices of the Europeans of modern states in Syria and Iraq and Lebanon, Jordan and the Gulf states. After World War II, many of them became independent. You also witness after World War II the emergence of Israel, the creation of Israel. And that led to a whole new set of tensions within the region that pitted Arab against Israeli. But you also saw internal tensions in many of these countries uh, because of ethnic and sectarian differences, because many of them didn't have uh, vibrant or dynamic political parties, but you had autocrats in most of these countries um, putting a lid on many of the internal questions. With the history of the Middle East in mind, we can segue off into the religion. The bigger issue is whether Islam is compatible with secular democracy or liberal democracy, and I think that's where there is real tension. Islam does seem to be, at least so far in history, to be uniquely resistant to secularization. Islam continues to play an outsized role in public life and politics Noting throughout the Muslim world. We now look to their natural resources. Countries abundant in natural resources are often thought of as the lucky ones. But in reality, the truth can be very different. Natural gifts can be a burden on an economy tying the fates of a country's citizens to a temperamental commodities market and opening the door to corruption and exploitation. Some resource-rich countries have struggled with less economic growth, less democracy and worse development. In some cases, internal divisions can lead to violence and authoritarian disease. Why these kinds of resources can be bad for the economy as well resources curse and there's a big dividing line the big question is is your government accountable to the people when the money starts coming in places like Norway Botswana the government is accountable to the people so the people make the government use the money for the public good but if the money comes in under the rule of a strong man like Gaddafi it just makes him stronger if the money comes in during a civil war like in Nigeria, it just fuels the warring parties. The key is that resources are money, money is power, and unless that power is accountable to the people of the country, the resources will curse. Ultimately, we can detect the trends displayed in developing countries in general, but specifically the Middle East. A combination of past colonial rule, non-secular society, and a wealth of natural resources have all contributed to the authoritarian patterns in the Middle East.